the th three, two, 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 one. And yes, I purposely did that. Hey everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to my channel. So today, guys, we're gonna be talking about Card Fight episode GZ11 or 12, 12, 12. We talked about 11 last week and we didn't get views. So um, we're here back for the same old grindstone. We're gonna break down the episode, talk about it, theorize a little bit, and cry at the end. So today, guys, we're brought to you by this wonderful art done by my girlfriend. Hope you like it. This is her first drawing of a wolf, and I ran it through Photoshop to soften up some of the noise in the background to make it look cleaner. Tell me what you guys think if you like the new icon. And because I love it personally, it looks great, and it's one of my favorite icons I've ever had on the channel. So, moving along to this week's episode. We got the whole cast here this week. We get to see all these wonderful faces for a brief five seconds apiece. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, and the whole episode. No variation of story today, which is kind of nice. So we start the episode off with our wonderful cell phones going off. Sorry, guys, I forgot to mute uh, my phone. One second, though. All right. So moving on, we get our wonderful group of Shion, Tokoha, Kazuko, and um, I know your name, Tayo. Tayo is by far one of my favorite characters. I know your name, <coughs> Tayo. They're all wondering where Krono went. They found where Buki stuff was. So on and so forth. They sort of wonder. We get another screenshot of their faces. So people actually had to draw and do work this week. Instead of, you know, leaving it at. Hey, let's just give their lines here. Talk about it. And move on with our lives. There's a lot more that actually talks here. So kind of nice. Um, Yeah. Art style looks fantastic this season though. Like, I love how they changed Xion's whole persona. Like, I don't know if you guys have realized. But Xion has changed a lot since the original G series, and I'm kind of sad to see him go. Maybe we'll get him and him as a main character. Tayo's definitely going to be a main character next season, like, low-key. He's going to be the new Kamui. Takazuto, I got I got words to have with you here soon. But we're two minutes in. So, this is where we enter our first scene back into the card fight with uh, Chrono taking over Buki's card fight. So they're talking, he's stating how, if, you know, Krono loses, Buki's gonna die, and so on. That's sort of the talk. Um, Krono then evaluates their standing with um, what's his face over there at three and Buki at five. The cards in hand, he has a PG, a grade three, a stride fodder, a sacrificing, and a new grade one that is actually really powerful. Guys, this unit uh, is powerful. It gets 4K for unlocking. It's actually really good. So we'll move on. Um, so Chrono picks up the turn by striding into Genesis Dragon. Um, I think that's what this picture was meant to be, but my computer was a bit slow tonight. I'm taking it screenshots. So we have a wonderful picture anyways of Dark Zone's newest Dark Irregular unit. So, yeah, he strides into that, does shenanigans, ends turn, moves on to that, and yeah. Um, he talks some more about Giza. He's actually going insane at this point. But not a lot happens up to that point. A couple fights, and then we get his G stride. So, guys, I'm actually kind of low-key disappointed about this. Why am I disappointed? They showed the Dark Zone Xeroth Dragon first before they even showed off the... Um, what's it called? The uh, Stargate one, which only leads me to believe that the Stargate unit is going to be even more powerful. Like, literally more powerful. So, moving on. Um, I think these photos are actually out of order. That's my B. It's my bad. So, before he goes into his ultimate strat, he talks a little bit about Chrono and how he's going to become Giza's new vessel, and we get another shot of Giza. Kind of nice, Chrono being scared. Um, yeah. Uh, and here's where he just goes psychotic. In the world that is, in this world, you are the one most suitable to serve my host to my master. Yeah, he says that. It's kind of cool. Um, and then he states how Messiah is gonna lose its power before he G strides. And I, I like this picture because it shows an outline of what looks to be a Messiah unit being devoured or destroyed. Kind of nice. It's only in there for a quick second. It took me a couple tries to get this. So I liked it. Um, 
yeah, it, it just shows the, it just shows like what the, they were going for was a destroyed messiah. So if you guys don't know what this whole fight was for, which you should go check out my la previous episode and last week's episode of Card Fight GZ. Um, this fight is to kill off Ibuki and then to destroy the messiah on Kray. Sorry, I, my brain's not processing. I haven't done anything in the past week. Um, this flashes on Chrono's hand for a second, signifying that he has technically severed his tie with Chrono Jet. And since, um, they've been released from the relics, we have not really seen Chrono use Chrono Jet. I mean, he had that small little shop fight, but he hasn't used the deck in quite a while. Like, Chrono has not been the main focus of the season, and I like that. Main focus as in he has not been the main character in fights or any other reason like he was the main star of episode one maybe two episodes in total and then he had this episode so it's kind of nice to have 12 episodes deep and to it not be all over chrono's story besides you know everyone worrying about chrono all right so yeah this flash is on hand this took a couple tries to get as well because it's such a quick one there's a lot if you don't pay attention to you'll miss this episode all right moving on um he states how he'll be baptized in the card. I'm assuming this is still Giza's card. There's no reason for me not to believe that right now. Moving on, so we finally get the ultimate stride, which I really couldn't get a good picture at first. There is a better one later on, so don't worry. But he ultimate strides into Zeroth Dragon of, of End of the World Zeroth Dragon of End of the World Dusk. Wow, that is a mouthful and I hate saying it. Which honestly just looks cool the way it's summoned. This purple ring showed up first, and then he came out. Um, and then his skill is actually kind of nice. Um, so start off for the counter blast of two. Obviously, all your all your units lose their abilities, and their grades become grades and power fall to one. The way that's worded makes me. Let me just um hit up my Discord real quick. Um, guys, a new Zeroth zero Dragon drops your power to one. Um, help. All right, go check out my Discord to see that message in... That was interjected in the middle of this video. Um, disable my streamer safe, because, you know, awesomeness. All right, moving on. And if your Vanguard, and if your Vanguard's grade is obviously one you can't guard with grade twos and up, that means no G guarding, no intercepting, no, yeah, th th that's it. No, it's not that terrible, guys. Oh, and also deals your Vanguard one damage, which just causes this guy more pain. He's like, oh no, why is it so broken? It's it's not broken. It's actually quite fair, but it's, um, yeah, no, it looks painful. His heart's sort of being wrapped in chains right now. It's killing him. Uh, Bushiro, you're getting dark really quickly. I like it. Let's continue forward. Uh, and then if the drops out, and then his unit gets a unique skill. So he calls his grade three, and it gets he gets to take two grade twos from drop zone on call for darkness put them into the drop zone and then he gains their abilities he possesses them um and then this is the zeroth dragon attack i'm trying to get as many good angles there doesn't look to be one so the quote again is it's driving force is the power of Z zeroth dragons it looks nice it's sort of just shooting a black beam of death which i liked um overall i think this unit's more powerful than we're giving it credit for um, just a thing I wanted to point out. So, this is his triple drive check. Got a critical trigger. I have a theory coming out later this week, maybe, possibly, depending on work schedule. But, every time I've seen a Xeroth Dragon attack, they always get a critical. Like, every single time. It's not even funny. I'm pretty sure if I went into my other folders, which I will do later and double check, but I'm pretty sure every single time a Xeroth Dragon has attacked, it's gotten at least one critical, or every Apostle gets a critical when they need it, when a critical would be clutch in the game. So that happens. 
Um, and then he goes on to a rant about talking how the worlds are connected and it's all Corona's fault. I really like this imagery. Um, if this is the thumbnail, I like it. If not, I'm sorry. I should have made this the thumbnail and I feel bad. So, moving along. Uh, then we play the best card in the game. Genesis Dragon Harmonix Neo Messiah. I think I, um, bought a couple Genesis Dragons. Har Har Harmony. Let's see, I bought Harmonix Messiah. So back, I bought four copies of Harmonix Messiah when, uh, Messiah units were getting new stuff because I wasn't sure if we were going to get something for, like, every G unit face up in your G zone with Messiah in its name, give something. So I bought four of them because they're kind of cool and I like them and you guys can't judge me. I can like what I want. But, I'm sorry, uh, I think something fell off my table, so I'm just checking it up. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I bought them, and it's a nice 16 base Strider, so, you know, guys, it's a Cray Elemental, deal with it. I'm keeping it. I'll, I'll build a deck profile later. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Moving on, so we get this unit, and he attacks this unit after attacking with his Alter Ego Ideal Messiah. Uh, we got a nice little team up between the two here, which was nice. They're working together at the end of the fight because Chrono's here trying to be good and Ibuki's trying not to die, so that's motivation to get off your lazy butt and fight. Also, um, when you unlock him, he literally he locked all five of his rear guards after attacking. It's just this, oh yeah, by the way, I unlock for 25k. Attack. Deal with it. So he attacks with his Harmonix Messiah... Or Neos Messiah. He gave all of his rear guards 5k. And then he obliterated the Dark Sun guy. Which is this black mesh blob if you can't tell. Then yeah. um, Black Moon Dragon. You are completely right. Every single time one of these guys lose. It's always their grade 3. And I do think this is symbolic. Towards them losing a fraction of their soul. That's what I honestly believe what happens with these cards. Is that this is a fraction of their being gone. It's indicating that they've been banished. And I think Black, Black Moon did call that. Moving on. Um, we got this nice little heartbreak of the chains around it. I thought it was interesting. Uh, some of you might be weirded out by seeing the heart Bushiro. You're doing a fantastic job on the veins and the everything. It's just beautiful. Beautiful heart. This should be the thumbnail. Um, and then his mark disappears as he cries in agony. And then he leaves. He leaves the Lurass to the Aqua Force user. We literally haven't seen him do anything since he beat up um, Shion. And then Ibuki does the most weirdest thing. He gives Chrono Jet the Dark Stone card. Just gives it to him. Without thinking. He's just, oh, here, take this. Do good with it. Which, now we get to see it's full art. And boy, is that friggin' majestic. Like, this card looks beautiful. I really love the red and blue wings as well. I didn't notice that at first, but as I overview this card, it, it's just beautiful. Moving along, at the end of the episode, after the end, after the credits, we got to see our three remaining drift rides here. Um, He sort of pissed off at him, and he's just like, oh, time to get to action, boys. And then, for next week's sneak peek, which I'm super excited for, Noah enters stage right, and his opponent next week will be Kazuto. Will he break? Will he become the Drift Ride of the Xeroth United Sanctuary Dragon? Find out next time in Card Fight GZ Episode 13. Thank you all for watching. I've been the Silver Wolf, and I'll see you all later. Peace!